Hi friends, about a year and a half ago I reviewed the Doomsday Slingshot Rifle made in China and the review came out so bad that I decided not to publish it. But now I'm getting so many emails of people urging me to test it because they think it's such a cool product that, okay, here it goes. Don't be disappointed. It's a rather harsh review. Enjoy anyway. Hello and welcome to the Slingshot channel. Today we are reviewing the Doomsday Slingshot Crossbow, also known as RS-X7 and so on. So first I bought this for 159 euros directly from China, from AliExpress. And it got delivered in about four different boxes. So it took it like two weeks or so before all of it arrived. And um, some parts were missing, so I had to replace some screws and so on. Uh, but all in all, it just took me maybe two hours to put it together because the manual was on video and it was all in Chinese. <laughs> but I realized now that there is also English uh, documentation, but not made by the manufacturer, but by, I think, the British importer. In any case, there are different variations on this on the market, some with rollers, and actually these are rollers too here. So these are actually our thin rollers. Um, and. Um, it has a magazine for up to 48 mm steel balls. So you can simply put them in by just lifting this up and then you can feed them into this hole here and then press down on them. Um, and uh, you can also fire arrows, but that would be rather slow. Now, this is a pump action crossbow, just much like one that I've already done in the past. Um, and it works like the same way. So there is a lock here, so you have to press this. Then you can slide this backwards until the string engages. And then if you push it a little bit more back, you can see that then this lever is pushed back and one of the steel balls is fed into the chamber. Now, I'm not sure if you can see this well, but it is now in the chamber. And now all I have to do is draw out the bow until it locks and then I can aim and Shoot! <laughs> yeah, it, it is kind of fun, but it has some serious design flaws. Let me talk about those. Now first you have some funny elements like this here. I mean, what is this? Some kind of a rail? What, what are you supposed to attach to it? So it's just, it's just a front handle and it makes it makes very edgy and uncomfortable to hold it. So this I would definitely enhance. Um, also the string. As you can see, it's made for metal, and also the clamps are made for metal. Now, those weigh probably more than the 8mm steel ball, so they're wasting a whole lot of energy instead of just using string, which is, which is exactly what they should have done. The biggest design flaw, though, is a very short acceleration length, because if you draw this back, you can actually see that the trigger locks in place here, so in the rearward position, which is just fine. The only problem is that the steel ball is here. So you have about this much of dead play before the string actually hits the steel ball. And because it's so heavy, it will, won't even accelerate it. It will just give it a huge kick and then it will be kicked out instead of completely investing all the energy stored in these rubber bands. So um, by removing this, by accelerating the steel ball from right here, they would actually increase the energy of the bow very much. Um, well, there are some other elements that I don't really like, like this rear stock here, which, I mean, look at how many screws are poking out and so on. Why? I mean, why? Why not just using a very inexpensive M16-like rear stock and attach it from soft air or airsoft or whatever? So, uh, also what I didn't like is I actually had to file this flat because they put on like a rail that was a mix between a Picatinny rail and an 11 millimeter dovetail rail. Nothing would ever hold on to it, so I had to file it in and so that it can attach a, a red top scope. This is also something that they definitely should enhance. Well, this thing is weak. That is my biggest criticism. Not sure why the Chinese always use this very small steel balls, but you see, rubber has a limited speed. It's very hard to get a slingshot crossbow shooting faster than 70 meters per second. Um, so therefore, usually what you do is, if you increase the amount of rubber, which you can in a crossbow, then you usually go up in projectile weight, which they decided not to do for whatever reason. Therefore, this is very, very weak. This has about two and a half joule, uh, because it shoots with about 50 meters per second only, and this is a two gram projectile. 
So, I mean, any any kind of, uh, even, even soft air uh, weapons have more energy. And even the cheapest air gun that you can buy, that's probably made in China or made in Russia or somewhere, it has a lot more power than this. So, and it's probably cheaper. So, um, so this is criticism. If you make a crossbow, make it powerful. And this is just a toy. Okay, let's test the accuracy. This is about 10 meters distance and we're going to shoot at that cam hanging into my catch box. Okay. All right. Switch on the right dot. And see if we can hit. Too far to the left. That was a hit. Oops. See the stock twisting on me. And yeah, that's a useless piece of equipment. Too far to the right. As you see, accuracy is really not great at all. That was a hit. One more. Okay, almost a hit. <laughs> so yes, you can hit something with it, but it is real far away from the accuracy of the cheapest air gun that I've ever shot, which was a piece of junk really, but in comparison it would still be like a marksman's rifle. So what is my verdict? Well, you can probably already say that I don't really love this thing, although with a few um, attempts it could be made a lot better. So simply this model here without changing it, just by using string instead of this here, would make it better. Using superior rubber and a little bit more rubber would also help a lot. And of course you would have to um, see if we could change anything on the rear stock. Which is probably something that I'm going to do. Just because it's a slingshot and uh, I can't let this happen. <laughs> That's, you know, this thing is you know, useless otherwise. Uh, in any case, uh, if I would redesign it, I would definitely go for thicker balls, at least like 12 mm, better 15 mm steel balls. Go for a longer acceleration, go for a different lock system completely. Um, also, um, of course, enhance this and get rid of this funny looking stock. Then it could actually be a viable product. But in this fashion, I don't think that I would recommend it to anyone. Now I realize that there are other versions of this that come probably are a little better than this one. I've seen some with huge rollers. I hate rollers because they eat rubber like crazy and also you lose a lot of energy due to friction and mass. Um, so uh, this is also something that I would uh, do differently. I would attach like a different fork, a wider fork that makes all this roller business uh, superfluous. You know, this is really not necessary for, you know, ideally in a slingshot setup, the rubber bands should never touch anything, uh, specifically not in stretched condition because they're so vulnerable. And therefore this could be, a, a, you know, a lot different if they would, uh, if they would make it that happen. So this could be a lot better if they would actually take my advice and enhance it. But the way it is, no, nah, I don't like it. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, I hope you like this because that's it for today. Ah, thanks and bye bye.